hopefully it works, right Kev? Yes, I really hope this works. We've never tried this before, so we have a trick up our sleeve. Right, ready? Yeah. Set. What's up, Light Bright Nation? What's going on, Light Bright Nation? So, welcome officially to phase 3.3. <laughs> Let's, let's of the gladiator giveaway build. It's kind of 3.9 since it's this like is like 3. the last. It's like 3.3. I mean, it's literally, this is the final phase. This is it. There might be a few things we do it's here little, and there between now and the actual giveaway yeah, itself. Yeah, little, little things. Yeah, we'll change things. But in terms of like the build of the gladiator giveaway, this is it. And it is a doozy. But before we get into that, let's get a little super duper cereal here because we haven't brought it up yet on the channel and it is kind of serious and that is the coronavirus that is going around everywhere in the world apparently. Yeah, and so, so the world's yeah, closing down. The world and, is shutting down. It's and coming to a total stop. I've never, I never thought ever that that could happen, um, but it is. Honestly, we keep expecting someone to wake up and go, psych! Yeah. Just kidding, <laughs> but uh, that's not the case as most of you know because I know these videos come out a little later than after we film them obviously. So everyone is probably fully aware of the fact that not just EJS, Easter Jeep Safari, but also Jeep Beach, 2020 has been officially canceled. Yep. Which the question from that point means, what are we doing? Because obviously EJS and Jeep Beach were two huge events that we were gonna be going to. Wheeling. Well, Wheeling. yes, yes. Wheeling, so. <laughs> so. With the events canceled, that means we're not going to them, but that isn't really gonna change what Kevin and I do, which is. We're gonna go wheeling. We're gonna go wheeling. We're gonna do what we always do, which is wing the f out of it. Uh, not adults very well so, and hope and, and hope that we can figure out fun well, stuff to do. So we have mountain house meals, right? Yep. We have a ton of mountain house meals. Uh, we have the gladiator now with the rooftop tent and a full outfit of being able to sleep in it. Because we don't have a home that so, the government can quarantine so, us to necessarily. So, <laughs> so we're just supposed to go to Canada and they just closed Canada today, but yep. here's a really cool thing. So we can literally go somewhere, we can unload the gladiator and unload the JL, right? We can go up in the mountains, we could set the, the foster child up as camp, as our camp spot. And then spot, leave it there. And leave it there, and then take the stepchild out to go wheeling. wheeling. We can so, literally, we've, we've we literally actually, have. We're just gonna go find cool rad wheeling stuff to do. But before we get to all of that, again, this is the final Gladiator giveaway build. So let's go ahead and get started and go over some of the stuff that we did to the Gladiator. Now I realize obviously this is the stepchild, not the foster child, but it's very important. So in the last video, I kind of mentioned these PRP seat covers and how freaking amazing they've held up so far because as of right now, we actually haven't done a review on them, which we kind of haven't been doing them justice by not doing a review because they are amazing. We've had them for over a year now and we haven't probably vacuumed these or cleaned them in over six months. We definitely haven't done it since uh, the trail to SEMA, which you remember how crazy that was. And these things have withstood not only me standing on them with my dirty <laughs> shoes and boots, because typically I'm filming out at the Sunrider, but also they've withstood Jelly's muddy paws and claws. They've also withstood Kevin's terrible, terribly messy eating habits inside the vehicle. And they've withstood just about every trail that we've been able to put them up I mean, against. And these aren't vacuumed or cleaned right now. These are literally no, like, we just, just like they are. literally wipe them off like this. And, and I mean, I was really worried, especially with the suede, that the suede wouldn't hold up because obviously part of a Jeep, you get wet, you get muddy, you get dirty. But you can see, obviously here, it's <laughs> yeah. held up just fine. It's like it still looks totally fine. The suede did worry me. I'm like, I'm going to destroy yeah, these. Instantly. And we didn't, we didn't coat them. We didn't, um, no, we didn't, whatchamacallit. we didn't do the spray stuff that you're supposed to coat them with, which probably would have been a good idea, but, but even, obviously wasn't needed. Even Jelly's claws, like there's no claw marks. I don't know how, like, I, I'm just... They've held up extremely well. So of course, we went ahead and we got a custom set made for the foster child. So this is what the gladiator seats look like right now, which as you can see, nothing special. They're kind of sort of just your, your plain gray. Jane gray. Yeah, they're just gray. They're just gray cloth seats. Now we're gonna do something a little tricky here. Hopefully it works, right Kev? Yes, I really hope this works. We've never tried this before, so. I do not want to spend it a... all day putting seat covers on, but. We have a trick up our sleeve. All right, ready? Yeah. Set. Let's see if it worked. Victory! Ta-da! 
Good job. Awesome. <laughs>I got the PRPC covers done on this gladiator. I really wish I would have shown you how to install them. Now, I wasn't thinking about it because we, we did our jail last year and we did it install how to then. But well, since then. Yeah, since then, PRP's changed it for the better and they've also included this handy dandy tucking tool which made this way, way, way easier. And I've never installed seat covers before we did the jail, which means I didn't know this was a thing. So now this is used to tuck in the fabric around stuff like this here get in behind here, shove all that in. Now, a couple things to keep in mind is there is a zipper here on both sides. Just like on the jail. Just like on the jail. Leave that completely unzipped when you get it on. Now, what I did was I actually got everything semi-fitted and put down while we were in the Jeep, and then I removed the seats to finish the rest of it, and that made it infinitely easier getting all the straps underneath put on. When we did the JL, we didn't remove these guys, and it was a little more difficult. Removing the seats, it's just four bolts, is definitely a lot easier. Right, and then another thing to point out, is the back here. This zipper here is here so you can get the seat belt around. So you're gonna kind of put it folded around and get the seat belt out of here. So you don't have to undo the seat belt. It literally goes around it because of that zipper. Now Jeep, for whatever dumb, silly reason, made it so that these rear headrests don't come out. I, I, like I, they, well, they well, do. They, they do, but you have to like take off the whole backing and do a bunch of stuff. They're anyway. Like, they're insanely difficult yeah. to remove. So what PRP did was actually made it so you don't have to take these off. It literally will slide over the headrest yeah. itself. So you don't have to remove these rear headrests. As well as the bottom seats, these just pop up and you literally install it all with it right here so in the vehicle. So basically you don't have to remove anything in the back seat. The seat covers go on and weirdly enough, the rear seat covers were way easier we're actually easier than the yeah. front seats well then the rear seats that were in the jl and i don't oh, know if down. that's changed for the jl2 or just the jt but these rear seats were actually a lot nicer and easier to install now one last thing is when you're doing these rear seats start with these guys here the baby kind of, buckles yes put put the little flaps in between the seat and then shove these in and get that all situated and then fold the the covers around the seats that made it super simple tip trick of the day yep and then, of course, last but not least, don't forget that these bad boys can be customized in just about any color and fabric that you want. Obviously, you've seen the stepchild. We went with the red and black theme. Of course, on the Gladiator, we went with the white and black. So we've got the white stitching. We've got the black suede. We've got the black leather. And ah, on the front, we actually went with a little bit of white accent on the shoulders as well. We almost put them down low, but then we decided that'd probably get really dirty pretty quickly with people getting in and out. We steer clear to that. We also put white, ah, as you saw, right there. Okay, so now this is the point where we tell you exactly why the Jeep Gladiator <laughs> sucks. And it's not for any reason that you're imagining, I promise you. And it only sucks for one reason, and that is that there is an infinite amount of stuff that you can modify this vehicle with, and it is absolutely ridiculous. It's bonkers. So like, we built the stepchild, and of course that's a ton, but when you move over to a truck and do an overland build, the options are endless, <laughs> such as these 8700 Evolution J2 headlights by JW Speaker. Obviously, we didn't get the lighting package, and we had the really crappy factory Jeep halogen headlights, and those were simply not going to do. We had to upgrade the headlights as well. And what's really, really cool about these guys from JW Speaker is not only are they DOT compliant, which means they're good and legal on road, but they also have a dual burn high beam, and they're infinitely cooler looking than the factory headlights. Now, if you weren't distracted by Britney's beautiful looks Aww. and those super sick JW Speaker headlights... <laughs> You may have also noticed this bad boy. Look at the snorkel! This is the Rugged Ridge snorkel. The no drill, no cut, no nothing snorkel. I have been eyeballing this since SEMA of 2018. 
We're in 2020 now. But they finally <laughs> just came out with this. And this is that dual snorkel. So right now we have it in the high snorkel mode, but they do have a separate plate where you block it off here and you have the snorkel just here down low. So if you don't like this look or you don't need it up high. You can make it a lot more subtle. You can make it a lot more subtle. And I think I'll end up eventually doing that. Check this out. This is so slick. Look at this. So it, it literally snaps into the factory box. It feeds through this oval tube right under the hood, into the cowl. I mean, it is super slick. It is so slick. <laughs> look at that. Now look, you may not go through water crossings. You may not even live somewhere that's dusty, but you may just want to look cool. And I really <laughs> think, I really think sometimes some of this stuff is to look cool, but of course it's beneficial. Yep. So if you're going to go through a water crossing and you need something that tall, you're going to have plenty of other problems or issues because that's not exactly what a snorkel is only for. It actually is helping to keep fresh air. So if you're in a caravan of 5, 10, 15 vehicles, it's dusty. This generally puts the, the intake way above the dust line or the dust cloud instead of having it way down here, right at your tire and everything else. But, I mean, I just think it looks it's cool. It's an overland <laughs> vehicle. I think it's a law. Overland <laughs> yeah. vehicles have to have the snorkel. I think so. So while we got the hood open, you can snake a little sneak peek right over there. There is our UPR catch can. Now, I know this isn't a turbo or a supercharger, and that's fine. What we actually use this for is for the smoking issue. The, that these, our JL had that JTs also unfortunately have. Right. The V6, the way this is designed is that what happens is oil gets pulled up through the uh, PCV valve and actually ends up smoking you out if you're at an incline for too long. And we've shown it, we've already proven it on our Jeep, and they have sold many, 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 many of these things. Because and, it solves that issue. And everybody's like, oh my God, it solved my issue. You just have to make sure you keep it empty. Check yeah. it every two, three gas tanks, empty it out, that's it. So now moving out from under the hood, we've also got our twin ARB compressors right here, which I have showcased in a prior video, but we've got it mounted with Northridge's dual compressor mount right underneath the fender. It also comes with a heat shield and we finally got it all plumbed and wired up. Now you can see up here, we actually have a connection so we can run air tools, we can run an airline, or we can run an individual air hose so we can air up our tires. But we're also running our ARB lockers off of this bad boy. So if we go inside the vehicle, you can see here, it's working beautifully, along with our front and our rear lockers. Boom! Guys! So again, that's on our Switch Pro mount as well. So the Switch Pros, we have not just our front and rear locker, we have our air compressor, and we have all of the lights, the Baja Design lights, hooked up to this bad boy right now. So as we move to the back of the vehicle, I know you guys have definitely already seen this. It's actually super cool. This is ARB traction boards here. Um, we got the gray with the orange to kind of really tie into the whole color scheme. I thought it was super cool. So ARB tells me that the way they design these is that this is actually concave versus convex. Most boards kind of roll off in a hump where this one is concave. That way, when you put your tire over it, the you're tires not automatically climbing. You're not, right, right, you're not instantly climbing. It actually, the tire kind of starts to sit right here and starts climbing. Now they're also telling me that the way they set up these patterns was they took the 50, as like I said, the 50 most popular tires, kind of overlaid them in a computer and came up with this pattern to try to help the tire grab onto these knobs. So that was all computer generated. And then on the other side, you can see it says shovel. So one side is meant for traction boards. The other side is, is actually designed specifically for a shovel to get your sand, snow, mud, rocks, whatever you need out of the way of the tire to get that under there. Now, speaking of under there, you know we put the Dynatrack Pro Rock 44 front, which means, uh, uh, ah, let me see that baby right there, which means we had to add a new drive shaft. This is the 1350. You can go 1310, but we went 1350. Boom, right there with the Adams drive shaft. You see the bad slip joint here. We got the double cardan. Bam, right there. Look at that sexy. Look how sexy all that is together. I don't know, there's something Look about. How new it looks. <laughs> yeah, there's just something about like all this awesome, like beefy metal, like the rock crawler arms, Dynatrack axle, Adams drive shaft. It is just, mmm. Ew, weird. <laughs> now, you may have noticed 
we still have the stock fenders here and these ugly lights that don't match the pretty uh, JW speaker headlights. Or the Baja design lights or just anything else that's on the vehicle right now. Right, so I'm gonna give you guys a guess as to why we haven't upgraded any of this yet and what's coming. Let us know what you think in the let comments. Let us know what you think. We're gonna, let us know what you think's gonna happen here. Now remember we told you guys we weren't totally done with this build, but we are done with phase three. And to wrap it up, we did get you some all weather mats. But guys, we still have a ton to do, but at this point you can really see how well this bad boy is finally coming together. It looks freaking awesome. Alright you guys, so definitely let us know what you think. I, I'm, I mean, thi I, I'm thinking I don't want to give this away anymore and I if mean, there's a way, hold on, if there's a way that you guys, I mean, we do have the cash option, but if there, I, I don't want to give this away anymore. I mean, look at it. It's it's everything I've wanted. Kevin legit goes middle of finishing up the, the seat cover install. He goes, do we have to give it away? Yes. That's what it, Anyways, I don't, don't want to give it away. We like it a lot. It's, it's turning out to be like this super... Rad, anyways, let us know what you think in the comments below. Guys, make sure that you're following us on both Facebook and on Instagram. That way you can have the most up-to-date information about where we are and what we're doing as possible. And we'll try to keep you updated on the YouTube channel as well. And what's your favorite part of this build? I wanna know. I love these power steps. I love the snorkel. I love the switch. I, I, I put everything on here that I love. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it. He's not gonna keep it, we'll give it away. <laughs> Guys, we love you so much. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Remember, you can find all of your Life Bright Nation merch at lightbrightstudios.com, all of your Life Bright Nation decals at pixeldecals.com, and of course, don't forget about e3offroad.com so you can register to win this bad boy right here. Guys, we love you so much, and we will see you next time. Bye! Bye. walk it's midnight friday night we've had our meet and greet and um we don't have enough internet to upload our video right now so at midnight we have to leave and go drive into town to try to find enough internet yeah and it's snowing or it was snowing earlier but this is this kind of stuff you have to do when you have a youtube channel it is at midnight you have to leave the comfort of your bed taking a shower and getting to pajamas oh, to go uh, find internet to upload a video. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sweet. So you can see here it is 12.02 and it's 45 degrees out. So I guess it's not that cold. It's cold. It's cold enough. It's and we have to go upload a video at midnight on a Friday night because... That's what YouTubers have to do. I haven't recovered from the last one. The last video is up until 5 a.m. editing and I haven't caught back up on sleep. And I just want to go to bed right now. I know. All right, let's go to town. Anyway, you guys asked for like behind the scenes things and this is kind of the stuff that we have to do for these videos. And it happens more often than not, but we don't always want to have to like, oh, poor me. It's not a poor me. It's just showing you guys because you guys asked about it. Okay. So we've pulled over on the side of the road here, just just somewhere here on the side of the road because Brittany's phone found 10 megabytes per second upload. upload. So that means we should be here for maybe an hour or two. And oh, hopefully- No, about an hour. Hopefully a, a cop doesn't come by and like just- That's her, happened before in Uray. And in Utah. Yeah, in Utah. Or we're just sitting on the side of the road, and the next thing, like, like what are y'all doing? Yeah, and then you get to, then you get to try to explain to them, like, so we upload YouTube videos, and we're looking for internet, <laughs> we're looking for good cell phone service. Anyway, 
So, this is YouTube life. Oh, I just crushed my car. My little RC car behind me. Okay, goodbye, YouTubes. Ew. I don't want you. Ah! <laughs> she got you. Right in the mouth. Ew. Chili, I'm trying to edit. You're not being helpful.